Um, in this unit, we are going to talk about uh, causal reliable broadcast. And this is the first uh, time when we try now to impose some order on the message broadcast by different processes. So let's just look to some motivation. So assume that we have uh, a chat application. And in this chat application, whatever is written is reliably broadcast to a group. And assume that you are one of these groups and you got the following output. From a person called Cosman, you got, are you sure? Not in room E. And after that, you get the message from Miss Y, room D at forum. And then after that, you get the message. Does anyone know where the lecture is today? So evidently, the order of these messages are completely screwed up. What we really wanted is that what really happened in the system was that Mr. X asked, does anybody know where is the lecture today? Miss Y said it's room D and then Cosman said he thought it was in room E. So in this case we say that Mr. X caused Miss, Miss Y's message to occur which caused Cosman's message to occur. So there is a causality of between uh, these messages and that is what we are going to discuss today. And the question that that comes to our mind first is does uniform reliable broadcast remedy this so it's a question for you the listener and the answer is the following that of course reliable broadcast does not impose any order on message being broadcast whereas what we want is to impose order among Message that it's broadcast, and we get this by using causal reliable broadcast, which delivers all message in a causal order. We have looked to causality before in the notion that we got with the notion of happened before relation by Lambert. So we are going to revisit this now. So we'll talk now about causal effect relation between messages or message actually broadcast in a message passing system. So the original happened before relation was defined as follows. An event E1 may potentially have caused another event E2 if the following relation holds and what the relation is called happen before and is denoted by this E1 happens before E2 holds okay so just to remember what is the happen before relation we said that E happens before we said that E1 happens before E2 if E1 and E2 occur on the same process P and E1 is an event that really happened on that process before event E2. We also say that E1 happens before E2. If E2 is a transmission or sending of a message M at process P, and E2 is a reception of the same message at process Q. Then in this case we say, E1 happens before it. And also, we said that the relation itself is transitive, so that E1 happens before E2. If E1 happened before some event, E prime and E prime happens before E2. Let us look to this again in just a picture. So here we have two events happening on the same process and E1 occurs before E2. 
Here we have a situation where E1 is a sending of a message and E2 is a delivery of the message to the other process. And here is a transitivity situation where we have some event E prime such that E1 happens before E prime and E prime happens before E2, so E1 happens before E2. So this is the happens before relation. And now if we go to our um, now if we go to our intuition how we want to order broadcast in a group of processes. So just observe that so far we did not consider any ordering among messages. In particular, we consider all messages to be independent. So two messages from the same process might not be delivered in the same order which they were broadcast. It could very well you broadcast the message M1 and then you broadcast message M2 and M2 is delivered before M1. There's nothing in our specification that prevents that. And more than that, if the delivery of a message causes another message to be broadcast, it could be very well that the later message, in this case M2, is delivered by some process before M1. So we had no order guarantees in any message. So what we want is causal broadcast. And by causal broadcast, we mean causality between broadcast events is preserved by the corresponding delivery events. This means that we look to the happen before relation between broadcast events. And if one broadcast happened before another broadcast, then the delivery of message of the first broadcast will also happen before the delivery of the message of the second broadcast on all processes. So if broadcast of M1 happens before broadcast of M2, then the delivery of M2 cannot happen before the delivery of, of M1. So let's look carefully now to how to define causal broadcast. To define causal broadcast, we will basically now define a relation between messages. So we'll say one message has caused another message, and that's what we're going to see now. So let M1 and M2 be any two messages. And we say M1 causally precedes M2 if any of the following conditions hold. So the first condition is FIFO order. And by FIFO order, we mean that if some process PI broadcasts M1 before it broadcast M2, then M1 will say that M1 causally precedes M2. So that is five words. The second property, we call it network order. And this has to do with a process delivering a message that came from another process, of course, that was broadcast by another process, and later broadcast the message. In this case, we say that M1, the delivered message, happens before the broadcasted message. And the last condition is simple. It is transitivity, which says is there is a message M prime such that M1 hap it causally precedes M prime and M prime causally precedes M2. In this case, M1 causally precedes M2. Let us look to these different conditions just to understand them a little bit in. So, and we'll do it through some questions. So here we have two scenarios. I will call this scenario A and this scenario B. And we're just looking to FIFO order, which basically some process broadcast a message M1 before M2. One of these two scenarios obeys or satisfies the FIFO order property, whereas the other does not. 
So which one? So this one does not satisfy the FIFO order because if you, you can see clearly, in this case, M1 is broadcasted before M2, but on process P2, the delivery of M2, this is M2 here, is before the delivery of M1. So this is a situation we do not want to have. Whereas in scenario B, M1 is always delivered before M2. Let's look to the network order property, just to, to remember the network order. Some process delivers the message M1 and later broadcast message M2. So we require that M1 is delivered before M2 on all processes. Here's again two scenarios. We call this again A and this is B. One of them violates this property. So which one? Let us look. So in this case, P1 broadcasts message M1. P2 delivers M1 and then broadcasts message M2. Therefore, M1 should be delivered M1 should be delivered before M2 in all processes. And on P1, M1 is delivered before M2. On P2, M1 is delivered before M2. And on P3, M1 is delivered before M2. If we look to the scenario B, we see, without going into detail, that in this case, M2 is delivered before M1. So this scenario violates uh, the network property. Now let us look to the transitivity property, where there is some message M prime such that M1 causally precedes M prime and M prime causally precedes M2. And we have again the two scenarios A and B. And the question is which one violates the causality property that we have? We can look to this and see what is the situation. Here, definitely M1 happens or precedes M2 because M1 is delivered to P2 before, um, so M1 is before M2. And also, M2 has been broadcast by P2, and later M3 is broadcast by P3. So we know also that M2 is before M3. So let us look to any violation here. So on P1, M2 is delivered first, then M3, and then M1, which clearly violates our property, the transitivity property. Whereas on scenario B, it's always the case M1 is delivered before M2, before M3, M1 is delivered before M2, before M3, and the same holds for P2 and P3. This is M1, this is M2, M2, uh, M3. Okay. Thank you.